Hey guys, so I just wanted to make a quick video about my Radiant heating system. Um, I used a lot of YouTube videos. I googled a lot for information about Radiant floor systems. And there isn't too much information. Um, I had to put pieces together. Um, so I just wanted to add to, I guess, the information that's out there um, to add my video as well. So, so maybe it could help someone um, because it was a long process, but I did it all myself with the help of my dad. He, he was a contractor. Uh, he did roofing, siding um, back in the day, and now he's like doing internal um, contract work and, and inside doing everything from kitchens to bathrooms. So he, he knows a little about plumbing, but he's never done radiant systems um, before. So this was a learning experience for both of us. Um, I was going to use PEX. Um, but he kind of forced me to use copper, um, which is okay. Uh, he swept most of the pipes. I did a couple of them. Uh, so please don't judge on those because we're no experts. Um, but so I just wanted to start off. Let's dive in um, how it all works. Um, so it all starts with uh, the TACO switching, switching system. It's only one zone. I only have one zone upstairs um, that controls uh, three kind of separate uh, sections of my upstairs only half of my house has uh, radiant heat um, but basically it's connected to a nest which is set up at, for radiant heat so once that turns on it powers uh, this pump it's a Grundfos um, pump with three kind of settings I'm at medium right now last year oh by the way I've, I've been running this system for two years but last year I was running on low um, and my heat was set higher, but now I'm running on medium, which I think works a little bit better, uh, which I'll, I'll go about it when we look at the um, heating elements. But basically the pump is pushing the hot water and it's pushing down through uh, three kind of sections. And this is a blue fin, you can see that blue fin um, manifold. I bought everything, mostly everything you see here, I bought on supplyhouse.com, so shout out to them. Um, but when you buy the blue fin manifold, uh, you have to get these adapters as well to them. Um, if you guys want more information, just let comment and I'll, I'll try to put as much of the um, devices or equipment I have um, uh, as comments, I guess. Um, and then, so it pushes the hot water down um, and you can see it's coming out at 110 degrees about. And it's coming back right below 100. It's kind of hard to see, but yeah, right below 100. And then my gallons per minute, um, I'm just, I regulate it. Um, but basically it's just open for all three. And then the cold water comes through. It goes through a filter. It's just a sediment filter. Um, you can expulge the water right there it just cleans out the filter it's kind of tough because you need pressure from both sides um, which i add pressure from my home it's a closed system right now but i add a hose there and i kind of uh, push the water from both sides and it cleans out it, it works okay um, it just catches whatever i need to and if i need to i can close off isolate everything um, i can shut it off there i can shut it off there isolate this section and open it up and um, clean out the filter too if I need to. It's just, I know it's a closed system, but um, with soldering and anything that can actually, I don't know, pop out from any anywhere, I don't know where it would come from, any of these devices, um, it would just capture it. And then it comes in, and I have a, a Stiba Eltron. I know other people use like some kind of eco, um, tankless water heaters. I'm using a German one. I know it works. I know it's good. Um, and it's electric. So it pulls a lot of power. Um, but I am in the process of installing uh, solar panels right now as well. So hopefully that's going to kind of mitigate it. It's going to be a 10 kilowatt system. Um, so hopefully it's going to mitigate a lot of the um, power it uses, which is why I went with that instead of natural gas, because then I would have to do an exhaust system. Um, but I kind of wanted this to be kind of like a um, I don't know, clean energy or something, as long as the solar panels are working well. So I have it set to 110 degrees. I, last year I had it 125, 130, it was high, um, but I'm trying to follow like, um, right here you can see recommended 108 to 116. 
uh, for normal use so it lasts a long time. Um, so I'm, I'm set to 110. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm in Chicago right now, um, but the winter has been pretty mild. Um, and you can see isolation valves here as well. Uh, that's to clean out this tankless system. Uh, I don't know if you, I'm supposed to put vinegar through it or something. I can look it up, but it's been the second year I haven't cleaned it yet. I don't think I need to clean it as often. I know if you use your home one, you need it every year. Um, but this is a closed loop. Um, hopefully I don't have to clean it. If I do, let me know. Um, cause, but I was planning on cleaning it like once every five years or something like that. Um, so the hot water comes through. This is, um, I think this is called a, what is this? A pressure regulator or uh, it's the same thing that you have on your wa hot water heater. It just, if it's the pressure gets too high, it lets the water go. Um, so it just opens up. That's just a safety feature, precaution. And then here I have an expansion tank. Um, and on top I have a air uh, eliminator. So the air eliminator gets, gets rid of air, especially when I'm putting new water in. Uh, from my house, so it just gets rid of air and then the pressure tank, which I don't know Too much about pressure tanks. I know they expand when the water gets hot I just don't know what it's set at if I'm supposed to be checking that or, or setting it um, I just however it came from supply house um, That's how I installed it and I, I know it's kind of janky, but it's better than nothing. It's just supported by some copper uh, Connections right there to some two by fours um, and then so this goes to just uh, a kind of meter so I can look at the pressure, which it says is at 15, but it also says the temperature's at 100. Um, but as we saw here, it's at 110, and it's set at 110, so I don't really trust it too much. Um, so I don't know if I trust the pressure either, but it's set at 15. I'm around between 15 and 20, I usually set it. Um, but I do have a question. If I'm pushing the water in to the whole system, um, and let's say this tank is set to 15, um, to, to start expanding at, at the uh, 15 PSI. So if I hit 15 PSI and then I keep pushing it, it expands, but the pressure would never go on up because the uh, pressure tank would be taking all that pressure. Uh, so I don't know if it's truly 15 or if it's a little bit higher and the, and the pressure, um, is being kind of, uh, lowered by the expansion tank um i i just don't know that answer um but i do watch it and when it's warm or cold it's usually around the same pressure so i i don't think it's expanding um but if anyone knows or has a a link to some kind of video explaining that or how i can check it please let me know and then it closes the loop right here and again i add water or pressure um usually on the cold side and Every documentation I saw, um, I know there are some documents that came with some of um, the equipment I received or I've seen the YouTube videos, they always put the uh, the pump on the hot side. I don't know why, um, because for me, I would think you could you would put it on the cold side, like where my filter is, because um, then cooler water goes through it. Um, I know it's set, uh, the, uh, the, what is this, the pump can do can have higher, hotter water go through it. Uh, however, I don't know, I feel like if it was cooler water, it'd be better for it, but everyone has it on the hot side, so I just installed it on the hot side as well. Um, so this is my whole system. If you guys want me to go into kind of the electrical, um, I have done the electrical for both uh, the switching relay as well as the uh, uh, tankless water heater. I can go in on that as well. Um, and then I'm using Mr. Pex, uh, Pex tubing. Um, I know you can use Upnor, Mr. Pex. I feel like I've read that the engineer that started Upnor, one of the founding partners or something, um, don't quote me, but I think they, the person started Mr. Pex, so I fully trust Mr. Pex and I've had no issues. Um, and then the floor, what I have upstairs, uh, kind of looks like this. Well, it is this. Um, and the pecs going through it. So it's it's just uh, three-fourths plywood, basically, and then aluminum on top. And then the pecs it has a groove to go in. I don't know if you can see that. I know it's a little dusty. Um, but that's my flooring on top. And then I have um, 
vinyl, but it's not just any type of vinyl. It's a stone composite vinyl. So it gets cold and it gets warm uh, with different temperatures because of the stone. You can think of it as kind of like uh, your bathroom tile. So stone composite vinyl, uh, vinyl on top as well. If you want me to do a video on that, I can um, show you guys that and the layout and everything as well. Um, but it the whole system works pretty well. It keeps uh, the front half of my house warm. Um, the floor gets warm. It doesn't get hot like if you had electrical uh, floor warming in your bathroom. I had that in my condo downtown. Um, so it gets really hot and it's nice and warm. But this one just gets warm uh, and it just heats up the whole room. So it's nice, comfortable temperature. Um, but yeah, this is my system. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm not doing this to become like a YouTuber or anything. I just want to help people out because um, a lot of people help me with their videos. So like I said, keep it short. Let me know if you guys want any other videos on any parts of the system. If you can answer any of my questions. Um, and I'll try maybe to do some more in-depth ones on, on other items. But thanks. Have a good one.